السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today inshallah we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2022 paper 42 Let's start it Question 1 The symbols of the element of period 3 in the periodic table are shown As we can see here is the elements of period 3 in the periodic table starting from group 1 till group 8 Answer the following questions about this element each symbol may be used once, more than once, or not used at all. Write the symbol of the element which form a stable ion of charge plus 2. All group 2 metals have 2 electrons in their outer shell. They tend to lose these 2 electrons to reach to a stable configuration of the nearest noble gas, which is 8 electrons in the outer shell. So losing 2 electrons make an ion with a charge plus 2. The answer here is magnesium which element is the least reactive in the period the least reactive are noble gases or group 8 so the answer here is argon which element is used in water treatment chlorine is a disinfectant used in disinfection or in the treatment disinfection of water or in the treatment of water which element form an oxide which is main impurity in the iron ore the iron ore is hematite or iron 3 oxide. The main impurity in the iron ore is silica and silica is silicon oxide. So the element that forms silicon oxide is silicon. Silicon oxide is the impurities that can be removed by adding limestone to the blast ferns to react with the silica to form slag. Which element is an important component of fertilizers? We know that fertilizers may contain phosphorus, nitrogen, or potassium. Here in period three, we have phosphorus, one of the important components of fertilizers. Uh, which element is stored under oil? Group one metals are highly reactive metal. They can react with oxygen in the air or vapor, water vapor in the air, so they have to be stored under oil. The answer here is sodium from group one. Which element is used in food containers? Aluminium is used in food container because aluminium form a layer of aluminium oxide on the surface of the metal. It protects the metal from further corrosion and from protected from reaction with acids in the food. So aluminium is suitable to be used as food container. Which element is found in the ore zinc blend? We have to know the formula of zinc blend, which is zinc sulfide. So the element found in the zinc blend is sulfur from period 3. Question 2. Calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. Calcium hydroxide can be made by the reaction of calcium with water. Write the chemical equation for this reaction. We know calcium is a reactive metal can react with water to form alkali plus hydrogen gas. Here the alkali, as he mentioned here, calcium hydroxide, and we have hydrogen gas. Remember that this equation is for two marks, so we have to balance the equation. Here we have two hydrogen plus two, four hydrogen, so we have to multiply this by two, then two oxygen, two oxygen, this is a balanced equation. Name another substance that reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide. Calcium oxide, which is lime or quick lime, can react with water also to form calcium hydroxide. And this reaction is highly exothermic. Formation of calcium hydroxide from calcium oxide is an exothermic reaction. When calcium hydroxide dissolves in water, it dissociates into ions and form a weakly alkaline solution. You have to take care, weakly alkaline solution. So suggest the pH of the aqueous calcium hydroxide. Any alkaline pH has to be above seven, and because it is weakly alkaline, it may be 12 or anything below 12. So if you write any pH in this range, it will be correct. It is better to write 10 or 11 as it is the weakly alkaline BH, intermediate weakly alkaline BH. Give the formula of the ion responsible for making the solution alkaline. Of course, here, this is the dis dissociation of calcium hydroxide into calcium ion and hydroxide ions. This hydroxide ion responsible for the alkaline BH, so 
He asked here for the ion responsible for making the solution alkaline. It's the hydroxide ion. And remember to add the negative charge. Lime water is saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. Name the gas that lime water is used to test for. Lime water is used to test for carbon dioxide gas because carbon dioxide react with the lime water, which is calcium hydroxide, to form calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is insoluble in water, and that's why the solution turned from transparent into milky or cloudy because calcium carbonate is insoluble in water. It form, start to form a white precipitate, start as a clouds in the solution, and this is the test for carbon dioxide gas. Suggest what is meant by the term saturated solution. We know this definition. It is a solution that cannot dissolve any more solute at a given temperature. This question is for two marks. One mark for this word, at a given temperature, because we know that the solubility change by changing temperature. So we have to give the definition at a specific or at a given temperature. Describe how you would make a sample of lime water starting from solid calcium hydroxide. He already mentioned here that calcium hydroxide is a slightly soluble in water. So to make a solution of calcium hydroxide, starting from solid calcium hydroxide, we have to add excess calcium hydroxide to the water. We have to shake it well and then filter to remove the excess insoluble calcium hydroxide and the clear solution formed after filtration will be the lime water solution. Describe how you would test for the presence of calcium ions in a sample of lime water. Lime water is a calcium hydroxide and the cation here is calcium ions and we know already the test for calcium ion using sodium hydroxide, white precipitate of calcium hydroxide form it and a characteristic result that indicate this cation is calcium that this white precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. This result is characteristic for calcium because the white precipitate of zinc hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide soluble in excess sodium hydroxide but the white precipitate of calcium insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide so this is the test for calcium ions 25 centimeter cube sample of lime water is placed in a conical flask the concentration of the lime water in in the concentration of calcium hydroxide in the lime water is determined by titration with dilute hydrochloric acid. Name the item of the apparatus used to measure the volume of the acid in the titration. Here we put the lime water or calcium hydroxide in the conical flask so to make titration we have to add the acid in the purette. So the item used for uh, measure the volume of the acid is purette. State the type of reaction which takes place. Calcium hydroxide is an alkali, HCl is an acid, so the reaction is acid-based reaction, it's neutralization reaction. As well as lime water and dilute hydrochloric acid, state what other type of substance must be added to the conical flask. Of course, for titration, we have to add indicator in the conical flask. Indicator will change its color at the end point, so we have at this point, we know that the titration ends and we can determine the concentration of the calcium hydroxide in the lime water solution. So the other substance has to be added is indicator. The equation for the reaction is shown. Calcium hydroxide plus HCl will give calcium chloride and water, salt and water. This is the basic acid-based neutralization reaction and the products are salt, calcium chloride and water. 20 centimeter cube of 0.05 mole per decimeter cube HCl react with 25 centimeter cube of calcium hydroxide. Here we have the volume and the concentration of HCl and the volume of calcium hydroxide and we will calculate the concentration of the calcium hydroxide solution. Step by step Determine the concentration of calcium hydroxide in gram per decimeter cube using the following steps. First, we have to calculate the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid. As I said, we have the volume 
and the concentration. Number of moles equal to concentration multiplied by volume, but you have to remember that the volume must be in decimeter cube. So we will divide 20 by 1000 to get the volume in decimeter cube, then we will multiply it by the concentration. Now we have the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which is 0.001 mole. Then to calculate the number of moles of calcium hydroxide in 25 centimeter cube of, li of the lime water solution, we will refer back to the equation. The ratio of number of moles of calcium hydroxide to number of moles of HCl is 1 to 2. That means that the number of mole of hydrochloric acid is double the number of mole of calcium hydroxide. So to know the number of moles of, to calculate the number of moles of calcium hydroxide, we will divide number of moles of HCl by 2. Number of moles of calcium hydroxide will be 0 0.0005. Then calculate the concentration of calcium hydroxide solution in mole per decimeter cube. Number of moles equal to concentration multiplied by volume. We already know the number of moles and we know the volume, which is 25 centimeter cube. Now we have to calculate the concentration, number of moles, divide the volume. But remember that the volume should be in decimeter. So we will convert this 25 into decimeter cube by dividing it by 1000. The concentration of the calcium hydroxide will be 0.02 mole per decimeter cube. Then we want to calculate the concentration of calcium hydroxide in gram per decimeter cube. And instead of mole per decimeter, we will convert it into gram per decimeter cube. Okay, so first we will calculate the MR of calcium hydroxide, which is 74. So one mole of calcium hydroxide contains 74 grams. Now we have 0.02 moles, which will contain how many grams? It will contain, by cross multiplication, we will find that 0.02 moles of calcium hydro hydroxide contain 1.48 grams. So the concentration of calcium hydroxide in grams in this number of moles is 1.48 gram per decimeter cube. Question 3. Transition elements are found in the middle block of the periodic table. Chromium has several isotopes. Manganese has only one isotope. State what is meant by the term isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons and different number of neutrons or it has the same proton number and different nucleon number. It is the same definition. State the nucleon number of manganese. You will refer to the periodic table. Here is manganese. The nucleon number is the number of neutron and proton, which is below here in the periodic table, below, below the symbol of the element, which is 55. Complete the table to show the number of protons neutron and electrons in chromium plus 3 ion. Here you have to take care that the ion has a charge of plus 3, so number of electron is less than the number of proton by 3. The proton number is 24, so we have 24 proton, and number of electrons is less by 3, so we only have 21 electrons. Number of neutron can be calculated easily by subtracting the nucleon number mi minus the proton number. So 52 minus 24 is 28. One chemical property of the transition elements is that they form colored compounds. Give the color of the following hydrated salts. Hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color. Hydrated cobalt chloride is pink in color. Actually, these two hydrated salts are used to test for the presence of water because the anhydrous salt of copper sulfate is white. When we add water, the color change from white to blue and this indicates the presence of water. And the anhydrous salt of cobalt chloride is blue. Adding water or adding any solution to test if it contains water or not, the color will change from blue to pink, this indicates the presence of water.
So these two anhydrous salts test is used to test for the presence of water. State two other chemical properties of the transition elements. Two other chemical properties other than they form a colored compound. Take care. Sometimes he ask about the chemical properties and sometimes ask about the physical properties. Here he want other two chemical properties. So we know that they have variable oxidation state. They can form ions of more than one charge. You may find iron plus two, iron plus three, and so on. More than one oxidation state and they can be used as catalysts in chemical reactions. Transition elements and group 1 elements are metals. They have many physical properties, like the conduct electricity. They can be hammered into shape. Explain why transition elements and group 1 elements can conduct electricity. Of course, transition elements and group 1 both are metals, and metal have the structure of the metallic lattice, which is consists of positive ions arranged in rows or back together, surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons, which can move freely and conduct the currents. That's why they both can conduct electricity due to the presence of a sea of mobile electrons. State the property that describe a material which can be hammered into shape. A material can be hammered into shape or a metal can be hammered in shape that means it is malleable and the property will be malleability or we can just write malleable transition elements and group one elements differ in other physical properties take care here He'll, he will ask about the physical properties transition elements are harder and stronger than group one elements describe two other ways in which the physical properties of the transition elements differ from that of group one elements other than they are harder and stronger we have two other different physical properties like they have higher density and higher melting and boiling points then we will go to question four fluorine and chlorine are halogens suggest the appearance of fluorine the fluorine is the first element in group 7. We know that the color of the elements in group 7 gets darker as we go down the group. So fluorine is the lightest color of uh, lightest color in the group 7 elements. So the color of fluorine always remember it's pale yellow gas. Fluorine react with sulfur to form a compound which has 25.2% sulfur by mass. So only 25.2% mass of this compound is sulfur and the rest is fluorine. It has a relative molecular mass of 254. So the MR is 254. First step is calculate the percentage of fluorine in this compound. We have 25% sulfur. So the total percent, which is 100 minus 25.2 the percentage of fluorine will be 74.8%. He want to determine the molecular formula of this compound. So first, we will determine the empirical formula, then we will determine the molecular formula. We will write here the percentage of sulfur and the percentage of fluorine, then we will calculate the number of moles by dividing each percentage by the atomic mass so 25.2 percent by divided by the atomic mass of sulfur which is 32 then for fluorine we will divide its percentage by the atomic mass of fluorine which is 19 here we have the number of moles of sulfur and number of mole of fluorine then to make the ratio we will divide both number by the smallest number which is 0.78 the percentage of sulfur we will divide both number by the 0.7875 because it is the smallest number the ratio will be 1 to 5 so the empirical formula will be sf5 this is the empirical formula to know the molecular formula we have to use the relative molecular mass this relative molecular mass is in grams we have 254 grams 25.2% of them is sulfur, so we will calculate the mass of sulfur in this compound, which is multiplying the percentage of sulfur by the MR, 
we will get the mass of sulfur, which is 64. Then we will calculate the mass of fluorine by multiplying the percentage of fluorine by the MR. So we will get the mass of fluorine, which is 190. Then we will divide the mass of sulfur by the mass of one atom to know how many atoms of sulfur, number of sulfur atoms. The mass of one atom is 32. So dividing 64 by 32, we have two atoms of sulfur. The same for fluorine. To know the number of atoms of fluorine, we will divide the mass of fluorine by the mass of one atom of fluorine, which is 19. So we have two atoms of sulfur and 10 atoms of fluorine. The molecular formula of the compound is S2F10. Or we can uh, use another simple and more short way, uh, which is calculating the mass of the empirical formula. The empirical formula mass, we have the ratio 1 to 5, that means 1 sulfur atom and 5 fluorine atoms. 1 sulfur atom is 32 and 5 fluorine atoms is 5 multiplied by 19. This will be 95 plus 32, this will be 127. Then we will divide the molecular uh, formula mass, which is 254, by the empirical formula mass, which is 127. This will give you 2. That means the molecular formula is double the empirical formula. So we will multiply this by 2. The molecular formula will be 1 by 2. It will be 2 sulfur. And 5 by 2, it will be 10 for fluorine. So the molecular formula will be S2F10. Now you have two ways to answer this question. You can choose which way is better for you or which way is more simple to answer the question. Then we will go to the next question. Nitrogen trichloride is a covalent compound. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in a molecule of nitrogen trichloride. Show the outer electrons only. Nitrogen is in group 5. It has five outer electrons, so it needs three more electrons to reach its stable configuration. It will make three covalent bond, one with each chlorine atom. So it will share one electron with each of the chlorine atoms, as it's shown here. Don't forget to draw the lone pair of electrons of nitrogen. Then we will complete the outer shell electron of each chlorine atom by drawing six outer electron now each chlorine has eight electrons and the nitrogen atom also has eight electrons this question is for three mark one mark for the correct three covalent bond and second mark to draw the lumbar of electron of nitrogen and the third mark to to draw the six outer electrons of each chlorine atom lithium chloride is an ionic compound Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement and the charges of ions in lithium chloride. Lithium has three electrons, two electrons in the first shell, then one electron in the second shell. It will lose this uh, electron. Now it has only two electrons and one positive charge. This electron lost by lithium will be accepted by the chlorine. Chlorine has seven electrons in its outer shell. Now the electron number eight comes from lithium. So it has the symbol of X from lithium and chlorine atom will now have a negative charge. We have two ions, lithium ion with a positive charge and chlorine ion with a negative charge. Explain in terms of attractive forces between particles why lithium chloride is a solid at room temperature and nitrogen trichloride is liquid with a relatively low boiling point. We have to use the attractive forces and the type of particles in each compound because he mentioned explain in terms of attractive forces and the type of particles. Lithium chloride is an ionic compound in which ions, the type of particle here is ions, are held together by strong attractive, strong electrostatic forces of attraction, which need high energy to break it, so it is solid with high melting and boiling point, where nitrogen trichloride is a covalent compound where its molecule 
the type of particle here are molecules so the covalent compound where the molecules are held together by weak intermolecular forces of attraction which need less energy to break it so it has a low boiling point question number five here we come to the organic part the reaction scheme shows five organic reaction from reaction number one to reaction number five as we can see Reaction number one, sugar convert to ethanol. Reaction two, ethanol convert into carbon dioxide and water. Reaction number three, alkene A converted into ethanol. Reaction four, alkene convert into alkane. And reaction five, ethanol convert to unknown compound C. Name reaction number one. Here, a sugar convert into ethanol. This is one way of preparation of ethanol from sugar by fermentation using yeast. So the name of the reaction is fermentation. Name reaction 2 and write the chemical equation for this reaction. Reaction 2 where ethanol convert into carbon dioxide and water. We know that ethanol is a fuel. It burns in the presence of oxygen to give energy and convert into carbon dioxide and water. The name of this reaction is combustion reaction and the chemical equation here is the symbol of uh, the formula of uh, ethanol c2h5oh it burns in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water remember to balance the equation first we have two carbons so we will multiply carbon dioxide by two then calculate the number of hydrogen we have five plus one six uh, six hydrogen so we will multiply water by three three multiplied by two six and remember, we will leave oxygen till the end. This will be easier in balancing. We have three oxygen plus here four. So we have seven oxygen. One of them is here. So we need six more. Three multiplied by two is six. Reaction three forms ethanol from alkene A. Identify alkene A. Here, ethanol has two carbons. C2, H5, OH. So it is formed from alkene, which has two carbon. The first alkene, which has two carbon, we know that it is ethene. This is the formula of ethene, which form, which is the second way is used to preparation of ethanol. One way is fermentation. The second way is hydration of, or addition of water for uh, uh, ethene to convert into ethanol. So name the alkene, it's ethene. State the type of reaction that uh, is used during reaction three to convert alkene into ethanol. This is hydration or addition of water. State the reagent and the condition needed for reaction three. The reagent is steam, adding steam to ethene it is steam, not water, because the reaction happened at a temperature 300. So we will add water in the form of a gas. It's a steam. And the condition needed is 300 degrees Celsius, 60 atmospheric pressure, and phosphoric acid as a catalyst. These are the condition needed for hydration or addition of water to ethene to convert it into ethanol. Here we break the double bond and add water. 1H here and 1OH here. This will be ethanol. Then um, alkene A is converted into alkane B in reaction number 4. Converted, converting alkene into alkane. We know that alkene is ethene. So it will for, it will uh, convert into the corresponding alkane. Corresponding means it has also two carbon atoms, but now there is no double bond. Each carbon will have three hydrogen because the conversion of alkene into alkane happened by addition of hydrogen, breaking the double bond and add hydrogen. So now each carbon has three hydrogen atoms. This will be ethane so alkane b is, is ethane and alkene a is ethene
state the reagent and the condition needed for reaction four conversion of alkene into alkane by adding hydrogen so the reagent is hydrogen and the condition needed is a catalyst which is here nickel and temperature between 150 to 300 degrees celsius to convert from alkene into alkane the type of reaction is addition of hydrogen or we can just say hydrogenation state the general formula of alkane it's cn h2n plus 2 then ethanol is oxidized in reaction 5 by heating it with dilute sulfuric acid and other reagent here reaction 5 ethanol convert into compound c he mentioned that this reaction is oxidation using sulfuric acid and another reagent we know that oxidation in oxidation we are using acidified potassium manganate so here already mentioned and the question dilute sulfuric acid so the other reagent is potassium manganate name the homologous series compound c belongs to when any alcohol oxidize it convert into carboxylic acid ethanol when oxidized it's convert to the corresponding carboxylic acid corresponding means have the same number of carbon atoms so the type of uh, the series of compound c is carboxylic acid draw the structure of compound c ethanol c2h5oh or ch3ch2oh this is ethanol it will convert to the corresponding carboxylic acid which is also has two carbon atoms this is the isanoic acid which is this carbon oxidized to be c double bond o the formula of ethanoic acid ch3coh remember to show all atoms and all the bonds this is the structure of ethanoic acid the color of the acidified potassium manganate is purple when it is used as oxidizing agent it gets reduced and the color change from purple to colorless then question number six about polymers this question is about polymers polymer x is a condensation polymers part of the structure of polymer x is shown as we can see Polymer X formed from two types of monomer, one with a white block and the other one with a dark block. The linkage between the two monomers is an ester linkage. So the type of polymer is an ester polymer. It's a polyester. How many molecules of water are produced when this part of polymer X is formed? The question about this part of polymer. So we will count how many monomers joined together or how many ester linkage formed each ester linkage formed by removing one molecule of one molecule of water so here we have the first ester, ester linkage formed by removing one molecule of water the second one the third ester linkage that means there are three molecule of water have been removed to form three ester linkage each ester linkage is formed by removing one molecule of water complete the structure of the two monomer used to make polymer x as i said we have two, two two types of monomers the first one with the white block it has co from each side so it has a carboxylic group from each side we can draw easily the first monomer carboxylic one carboxylic group from each side the second monomer of the dark block it has OH from each side it's diol so we can easily draw it here with an OH group from each side so this is diacid and this is diol they form a polymer using ester linkage to form a polyester what type of condensation polymer as we said it's a polyester another question about polymer Y part of polymer Y has a structure shown here is polymer Y. State the number of different types of monomer needed to make polymer Y. He want to know how many types of monomer used. As we can see, the first monomer with the black block with one OH from this side and one carboxylic group from the other side. The other monomer is identical with the same block, one OH from the 
first side and one carboxylic group for the second side. The third monomer is, <coughs> third monomer is also identical. So we have three identical monomer. There is no different types. It is made only from one monomer. It is the same monomer joined together to form polymer Y. Question C about polymer Z. Polymer Z has the structure shown here. Draw the name, draw and name the structure of the monomer which form polymer Z. To know the monomer, we have to search for the point of repetition where the monomer is repeated. Here we have the first carbon having CH3, H, the second one H, CH3. Then the polymer start to repeat the structure here, CH3, H. So this is the point of repetition. We can break here. When we break this bond between these two carbons, this is the monomer. When we break this bond, we will add double bond here. We will also will remove this bond and this bond, and we will add a double bond here. This will be the structure of the monomer. So to draw the monomer, we will take this part and we will add double bond here. This is the monomer having H3, CH3, then the other side, CH3 and H. Then we want to name this monomer, showing all atoms and all bonds. So we have to draw this one as CH3 like this and this one CH3 like this. Show all atoms and all bonds. Then we have to name this monomer. To know, to know the name of the monomer, we have to choose the longest continuous chain. It doesn't have to be a straight chain, just to be longest continuous chain. So we will search for the longest continuous chain, starting from here. This is carbon number one, then carbon number two, three, and carbon number four. So four carbon, this is a butene, and the double bond on carbon number two, so it's a but to e. That's how we can name the monomer. Then name the chemical process used to make the monomer from polymer Z. How to obtain a monomer from a polymer by cracking. Cracking the long chain to give a shorter chain monomer. This is called cracking. Here we come to the end of our exam. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.